Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about urea cycle. What simple mnemonic tricks for the intermediate step and also for the enzymes. So urea cycle, it is a first metabolic pathway to be elucidated. Urea is formed from ammonia, carbon dioxide, aspartate in a cyclic pathway which is referred to as urea cycle. So we all know that urea cycle take place in liver cells that is hepatocytes and it is transferred to the kidneys and excreted through the urine. This is the process which take place in the human body that is urea cycle. Because, of, because the urea cycle was discovered by Krebs and Hanselate, these are the scientists who discovered urea cycle and it is often referred to as krebs hanselate cycle. This, and this urea cycle consists of five sequential enzymatic reactions. The first two reactions occur in mitochondria and remaining three reactions take place in cytosol. Urea cycle usually it begins with the formation of carbamyl phosphate in the mitochondria. So this is a first reaction taking place the formation of carbamyl phosphate in the mitochondria. The substrate for this step or for this reaction it is catalyzed by carbamyl phosphate synthetase. The enzyme which catalyze the reaction as carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. So please remember this carbamyl phosphate synthesis 1 is present in mitochondria and carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 is present in cytosol. So the first step of urea cycle is formation of carbamyl phosphate and for this reaction, uh, the enzyme involved is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 are ammonia and bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, we all know that it is a byproduct of the metabolic pathways that are taking place in human body. Because of the two molecules of ATP are required in carbamyl phosphate synthesis. Okay, for this reaction to take place, two molecules of ATPs are required. And the main important thing which we want to remember is this reaction is essentially irreversible. This reaction is irreversible reaction and this reaction requires two molecules of ATP. One is used to activate the bicarbonate. And the second molecule is used to phosphorylate the carbamate. Okay, for this purpose, it requires two ATP molecules. Next one is carbamyl phosphate sequentially reacts with ornithine to form citrulline. This formed carbamyl phosphate will react with ornithine to form citrulline. Citrulline will pass us into cytosol. Now it's in the hand of the cytosol. Now the reactions taking place in the mitochondria are finished and citrulline will pass to the cytosol. Next reactions will be taking place in cytosol. Next three steps that occur in cytosol. In first slide, we already seen that five sequential steps are there in urea cycle. Two steps are in taking place in mitochondria and other three steps that occur in cytosol. We can look what are the three steps. First step is formation of arginino-succinate by ATP dependent reaction of citrulline with aspartate, aspartate or aspartic acid, it is an amino acid which provides second nitrogen that is ultimately incorporated into urea. Then another step is formation of arginine from arginino-succinate which we formed in the previous step. Okay, This reaction released one fumarate 
which enters the citric acid cycle. The next one is formation of the urea and the regeneration of ornithine. And another important thing is that regeneration of ornithine take place in urea cycle in the last step. So these are the main important three steps which occur in cytosol that is formation of arginosuccinate then formation of arginine from arginosuccinate then at last urea and re regeneration of ornithine we can look to the cycle this is the representation of urea cycle from this you can see that this is ornithine ornithine carbo the car carbamyl phosphate sorry from uh, carbamyl phosphate we can start from carbamyl phosphate carbamyl phosphate means it, uh, that is a first formation first carbamyl phosphate is forming how carbonate and ammonium in the presence of carbonate and ammonium the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 which is present in the mitochondria by utilizing two molecules of ADP, ATP, ATP to form carbamyl phosphate. Then in presence of ornithine, trans carbaminoyl carboxylase, carbo, uh, carbo, uh, carboxylase enzyme, it is converted into citrulline. Then citrulline, it is converted into argin, argininosuccinate in presence of argininosuccinate synthetase. Then from argininosuccinate, it is then converted into arg fumarate. Fumarate in presence of argininosuccinate lyase. Then it is converted into arginine. Then at last, arginine is converted into ornithine in presence of arginase enzyme in which urea is liberated. In which urea is liberated. This is the typical representation of the uh, urea cycle. This is the next reactions of urea cycle taking place. In this you can see car carbon dioxide, ammonium, aspartate, 3 molecules of ATP and 2 molecules of water is converted into urea. Fumarate which enters into citric acid cycle and 2 ADP from utilizing 2 ATP in the first step itself plus AMP. Then the important, another important thing which we want to keep in mind is that four high energy phosphates are consumed in the synthesis of one molecule of urea. Four high, four high energy phosphates are consumed to synthesize one molecule of urea. One molecule of, so first reaction, step one is formation of carbamyl phosphate by carbon dioxide carbon dioxide plus NH4 that is ammonium plus utilizing two molecules of ATP to form carbamyl phosphate in presence of carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 and N acetyl glutamate and the second is formation of citrulline the second reaction is also mitochondrial citrulline is synthesized from carbamyl phosphate and ornithine by ornithine trans -carbo carboxylase enzyme and ornithine is regenerated and used in urea cycle this is an important point ornithine is regenerated and used in urea cycle and ornithine and citrulline are basic amino acids citrulline is transported to cytosol by transporter system then formation of citrulline ornithine and carbamyl phosphate is converted to citrulline in presence of ornithine tra trans carboxylase with keep in mind the second step was formation of citrulline then formation of argininosuccinate uh, that is citrulline will condense with aspartate to form argininosuccinate by the enzyme argininosuccinate synthetase by the enzyme argininosuccinate synthetase then second amino group of urea is incorporated. It requires ATP. It is derived from uh, cleaved to AMP and inorganic phosphate. 
two high energy bonds are required for this step also two high energy two high energy bonds are required that is this arginine succinate synthetase is cleaved to arginine succinate then formation of arginine here you can see the formation of arginine and fumarate uh, which is an intermediate of tca cycle citric acid cycle then fumarate provides connecting link between the tca that is citric acid cycle or gluconeogenesis fumarate is ag again converted to oxaloacetate through fumarase and mdh which is transaminated to aspartate then step another step is formation of urea it is the last step we all know that arginase is the enzyme see arginase is the enzyme sorry arginase is the enzyme which convert arginine to urea it is a fifth and final enzyme that cleaves arginine to yield the urea and ornithine ornithine is regenerated enters to mitochondria for its reuse in the urea cycle then ornithine and lysine compete with arginine that is competitive inhibition take place between the ornithine and lysine then this uh, this are this are the important points in the urea cycle now we will go to the significance what are the significance toxic ammonia is converted into non toxic urea okay it is excreted through urine the toxic materials are removed from the body through urea then synthesis of semi essential amino acid arginine ornithine is precursor of proline polyamines polyamines includes putrescine uh, spermidine spermine then polyamines have diverse roles in cell growth and proliferation these are the some uh, significance of urea cycles and uh, this is all things we have discussed already this that is first two enzymes which involved in mitochondria fumarate will inhibit the four step fumarates is present in mitochondria and arginine succinate lyase which is the enzyme which is present in cytoplasm and urea produced in liver okay urea cycle take place in hepatocyte cells liver cells and diffuses it is transported to blood to kidneys and excreted through urine and a small amount of urea will enter in intestine where it broken down to carbon dioxide and ammonia this ammonia either lost in the feces or absorbed into the blood the main function is that to remove the toxic ammonia from blood as urea this is a main function of the urea cycle then there are many uh, disorders relating to the urea cycle a uh, defense in metabolism of conversion of ammonia to urine that is urea cycle leads to hyper ammonia ammon uh, ammonia anemia or ns3 intoxication intoxication these are the disorders of urea cycle so this is the trick to learn urea cycle very simple mnemonic that is orange color cat always asks for an umbrella very easy to remember orange color cat always asks for an umbrella what do you mean by o orange o ornithine our urea cycle starts with the ornithine then c carbamyl phosphate then again c citrulline arginine succinate aspartate fumarate arginine urea so orange color cat always ask for a number la so this is a very easy mnemonic trick to learn urea cycle within seconds then enzymes used we also want to study the enzymes which is involved c o triple a that is o a we can say that uh, uh, like baby crying c o a o triple a c means carbamyl phosphate synthase ornithine trans carbo uh, carboxylase then arginine succinate synthase arginine succinate lyase then arginine so these are the two mnemonics which we can use to study urea cycle that is orange color orange color cat always has for an umbrella to study the intermediate steps of the urea cycle then enzymes used 
CO triple A. Very simple to learn urea cycle. I hope you all understand my video. Thank you so much.